Assalamualaikum. This is a lecture for MLT423, week 9, part 1. We will talk about enzyme immunoassay or EIA. Okay, first, let's have a look on what's the idea behind this. So first, EIA is applying the nature of reaction between enzyme and substrate. An enzyme-labeled antibody or enzyme-labeled antigen conjugate is used in immunology assays. So this is the enzyme conjugated antibody, the antibody and the enzyme. This antibody is not coming from the patient. This is commercially produced antibodies. They are one of the reagents for EIA. They will stick to the patient antigen or antibody so remember this is not from the patient this is a one of the reagent for EIA and we also have substrate they need to be to be very specific specific enzyme for specific substrate the enzyme with its substrate detects the presence and quantity of antigen or antibody in a patient Specimen. So how they detect the quantity? The conversion of a colorless substrate. So the, at first the substrate present in a colorless state. But when they meet their respective enzyme, they will produce a colored product. This allows for methods of detection. Either by colorimetry Colorimetry means we are using uh, an instrument such as photometer for quantifying the result or even by visual inspection. Commonly used enzyme substrate first is horse reddish peroxidase HRP. Their substrate is hydrogen peroxide and the color is or chromogen being used commonly tetramethyl benzidine. The interaction between HRP and TMB will produce a blue colored product. So we can observe a blue colored product in a positive sample. Second, alkaline phosphatase ALP, the substrate nitrophenyl phosphate, and the, co the color of chromogen is diethylamine. Their end product is come in yellow color. Second, EIA apply the nature of antibodies and antigens can be absorbed to a solid surface. They can they can we can stick them to a solid surface. For example, these two plastic microwell or a plastic micro bit. Even though the antigen or antibody is being stick to the solid surface, they still retain their high affinity binding. That means the properties or the strength of interaction between antigen and antibody is still there. So they, we can use this. And of course, on the nature of antibody itself, antibody known to be very good in specificity and sensitivity. And antibodies also can be produced commercially. We can, we can produce antibody against any kind of, uh, most of available substance that we can imagine, any kind of microorganism, proteins, drugs. So EIA is a very versatile method. So by adding an indicator system, indicator system where is the system where we can observe the reaction, we can find out whether the specific antibody or antigen that we are looking for is in the patient blood. How can we observe this? When enzyme label antibody specific to the test antibody, so this is the reagent antibodies. 
versus the patient antibody test antibody this antibody is the antibody that should be available in the patient serum against the substance that we're looking for for example if the patient is suspected uh, having COVID-19 so we are looking for COVID-19 antibody in the patient so the region that we have enzyme labeled antibody against the antibody of COVID-19 so this is the enzyme labeled antibody the added chromogenic substrate changes color if the enzyme is present so they need the, en the enzyme labeled antibody need to be there when we added the substrate this is the final stage of final steps of EIA the amount of color that develops I mean how dark is the, uh, the color being produced is proportional to the amount of antibody in the patient's serum so we can quantify we can have numbers we can uh, know how much or how many antibodies in the patient serum so this is a positive test but if in the final step there is no enzyme labeled antibody available in the test the substrate will not have the specific enzyme to react no color changes so the result is negative this is how the results and interpretation of EIA we are looking at Natisic well ELISA microplate ELISA is uh, a subtype of EIA EIA have a lot of uh, methods ELISA is one of them for positive tests we should observe color changes there are a lot here and for negative tests there will be no color changes I mean this patient are negative they do not have the infection compared to this patients so this well represent one patient so imagine we can perform almost uh, 90 plus samples in one ELISA plate the history of EIA so EIA start with the development of radioimmunoassay in 1960 when Burson and Yellow developed a method for measurement of plasma insulin And in 1971, so why do, did I mention radioimmunoassay in EIA timeline? It is because radioimmunoassay, by the name itself, they are dealing with radioactive uh, substance, radioisotope label. So when, when dealing with radioactive substance, just like when you uh, observe or looking how the engineers uh, or users uh, people uh, or workers in the uh, radioactive uh, nuclear plant we need to have a specific uh, lab then they need to be isolated from from people the users need a specific protective equipment specific storage place for the reagents because they are radioactive and we need to deal with the problem of discarding the waste so we cannot simply discard a radioactive waste to the environment so there, 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 there is ongoing needs for to, to replace radio immuno safe to a more friendly uh, method so in 1971 enzyme was discovered they can be used in immunoassay Enver and Perlman published their first paper on ELISA they were looking uh, on IgG while at the same time but different place different lab women and Schurz published their first paper on 
enzyme amino assay they were doing quantitative measurement of hcg hcg is the hormone that uh, being detected if a woman is pregnant hcg is uh, produced by the amniotic sac And in 1976, Organon Technica, a company, developed and marketed a highly successful EIA system for the hepatitis B surface antigen. So they start to begin a commercially available system. The reagents, the microplates, all being produced by the company. So you, you don't need to produce uh, in the lab uh, manually. And in 1980s, fully automated test instrument, fully automated mean this is a system, but you still need to do a lot of work manually, pipetting, preparing the reagent, mixing the reagent. But for a fully automated system, you just load the samples, the instrument will do the processing from A to Z until the result come out. And this is the time where EIA match the sensitivity of radio amino assay so enzyme amino assay start to replace radio amino assay in in 1980s and now EIA is one of the major uh, major majority of uh, fully automated instrument in medical lab i would say in malaysia every lab would have this sort of instrument for EIA for routine measurements of uh, numerous analytes I mean for routine measurement of patient everyday uh, testing for patient looking for anything looking for drugs infections any proteins from patient samples so if uh, you have a chance you will um, I'm sure you will be, you can observe this machine in every lab in Malaysia. So the purpose of EIA, first, of course, to detect specific antibody or to detect specific antigen. And they have uh, another extra. We can determine the amount of analyte, amount of antibody or amount of antigen in the patient. This is just not uh, positive or negative. By using EIA, we can uh, detect how much, how uh, bad is the infection by looking on how much antibody is being produced or how much antigen is in the patient blood. EIA produce procedure results in a colored end product which correlates to the amount of analyte present in the original sample. This uh, the required reading. references and thank you have a nice day